It can't be done. I don't believe you can do it. Well, then stand back and behold as I throw this switch! It's alive! Alive! <laughs> stand! Oh, my goodness. Look how big it is. Speak! Ah. Walk to me! No, this way! Oh, look at it going! If I can suddenly, where are you going? Come back here! No, don't, don't go near that door! If I can suddenly, come back! Stay away from those villagers! Ouch! Junior! It's time for bed! J just four more minutes. That's what you said four minutes ago. Let's skedaddle up those stairs. Your father will be up in a minute to tuck you in. Besides, I think this show might be a little too scary for you. It's not too scary. I... I like it. Yeah. I'm not scared. Monsters are around me. Big, growly monsters. Ah! Who are you? I'm Bob. I'm a tomato, and I'm here to help you. There's something in my toy chest. It's a monster. Oh, it's a big, scary uh, uh. lizard. It's a, it's baby pickle. Uh, it's a cucumber. Oh. Where is everybody? Over here, Larry. <clears throat> we couldn't help but notice that you were just a little bit frightened, so we thought we'd drop in and help. Yeah, uh, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for unto you... <clears throat> Wrong story, Larry. Oh, sorry. Well, I wasn't really scared, you know. It was just a movie. It's a big, scary monster. But I'm five years old, so I can handle it. Oh, so you weren't scared? Nope. I wasn't scared. He wasn't scared? No, not scared a bit. Well, maybe just a little bit. Oh, just a little bit scared? Oh, a little bit. But not too scared. Oh, well, yeah. Uh-huh. Why? How, how could you guys help me? I mean, if I was scared. Oh, we were just going to sing you a little song, that's all. But since you weren't even scared, I, I guess I guess we'll just be on our way. Yep. See you later. No, wait. I guess maybe a little song might be nice. Well, since you're in the neighborhood. Well, if you weren't scared, then there's really no reason. So we'll just be going now. Sing the song. Okay. <clears throat> Here goes. You were lying in your bed. You were feeling kind of sleepy But you couldn't close your eyes Because the room was getting creepy Were those eyeballs in the closet? Was that Godzilla in the hall? There was something big and hairy Casting shadows on the wall and now your heart is beating like a drum your skin is getting clammy there's a hundred tiny monsters jumping right into your jammies what are you gonna do I'm going to call the police. No, you don't need to do anything. What? Why? 
because... God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV. Oh, God is bigger than the boogeyman. And he's watching out for you and me. Get it? Um, well, I... Hmm. Well, no. Oh. Well, you see, you don't have to be afraid because God is the biggest. What? Is he bigger than King Kong? Because Kong's a really big monkey and he's kind of scary. Next to God, Junior, King Kong would look like an itty bitty bug. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, is he bigger than the slime monster? Because he's the biggest monster of them all. Compared to God, the slime monster is like a teeny little cornflake. Yeah, but the slime monster can squirt slime out of his ears. Can God squirt slime out of his ears? <clears throat> Come over here, Junior. What do you see up there? My curtains. No, out the window, up in the sky. I see lots of stars. God made all those stars out of nothing. He just went, and there they were. No way! That's right. And he also made the sun and the moon and even the earth that we're living on right now. Wow! Slime Monster couldn't do that. Well, even if he tried, he'd get everything really sticky. But do you know what else God made? What? He made all the plants and animals and people too. Wow! And that's why we don't have to be afraid. Huh? You see, everything God makes is very special to him. He made all the little kids and he loves them very much. And because he loves them, he takes extra good care of them. So we don't need to be afraid because God is always looking out for us. Oh, I get it. So you're saying God's the biggest of them all and he's on my team. That's right. Oh, by the way, there's someone else who wants to meet you. Ah, it's freaking Celery! Uh, well, actually, my name is Phil Winkelstein, and I'm an actor from Toledo. What? Well, I I was just pretending to be Frank and Celery in that TV show. Um, that was my job. I mean, really, I'm just a regular guy, and, and I wouldn't hurt anybody. Oh, I get it. So when I'm lying in my bed And the furniture starts creeping I'll just laugh and say, hey, cut that out And get back to my sleeping Cause I know that God's the biggest And he's watching all the while So when I get scared, I'll think of him And close my saw me on TV. Well, that's okay, because now I know that God is taking care of me. God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV. Oh, God is bigger than the boogeyman. And he's watching out for you and me. One more time. God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or the Junior, what's all that racket in there? Well, I was just singing. Well, your mother and I think that show was a little too scary for you. Yeah, well, maybe, but, but you know, Frank and Celery is really a guy named Phil from Toledo. Well, and he's really not scary at all. And besides, God is bigger than any 
of them, and even though he doesn't squirt slime out of his ears, he made the whole universe, and he's taking good care of me, too. Um, well, you're right. We don't have to worry about things because God is taking care of us. I do think we should be a little more careful about what we watch on television. And you know what? It's okay to tell us if you're really scared. Okay, I guess you're right. Sounds like you've been doing some good thinking. But it's time to shut the thinker down now and get some sleep. Okay. I love you, little mister. I love you, big mister. I'll see you in the morning. All right. God is bigger than the... <sighs> And now it's time for Silly Songs with Laddie, the part of the show where Laddie comes out and sings a silly song. So without further ado, Silly Songs with Laddie. The Water Buffalo Song Everybody's got a water buffalo Yours is fast but mine is slow Oh, where'd we get them? I don't know But everybody's got a water buffalo Ooh. I took my buffalo to the store Got his head stuck in the door Spilled some lima beans on the floor Oh, everybody stop got it. a... Stop. stop right this instant! What do you think you're doing? You can't say everyone's got a water buffalo and everyone does not have a water buffalo. We're going to get nasty letters saying, where's my water buffalo? Why don't I have a water buffalo? And are you prepared to deal with that? I don't think so. Just stop being so silly. This has been Silly Songs with Laddie. Tune in next time to hear Laddie sing. Everybody got a baby kangaroo. Yours is pink, but mine is blue. Hers was small. <laughs> Long, long ago, in a faraway land, there lived a young man named Daniel. When Daniel was a boy, he was taken from his home in Judah to live in a city called Babylon, where he went to school in the palace of the Babylonian king. Daniel missed his home very much, and every day he prayed that God would take care of his family and his friends and look after him too. God heard his prayers and helped Daniel become wise as he grew older, till everyone in the palace knew of his wisdom. Then one night, while Babylon was sleeping, the king had a dream. And I wish someone would tell me what it means We are your wise men Yes, that is true And though we're using all our wisdom We're afraid we can't explain your dream to you What? But there is one who is wiser still And Daniel is his name So before you take another sleeping pill my name is Daniel. That much is true. But it is God who gives me wisdom, and through me, He will explain your dreams to you. His name is Daniel. What he said. But when he talks about this part of his, I think he's kind of living in the head. <laughs> I do. Well.
Well, Daniel was able to explain the king's dream, and this made the king very happy. Daniel, you have enlightened me. Your job I will expand. From now on, I want you to sit right beside me as the second in command. This was very good news for Daniel, but very bad news for the wise men. You see, each one of them wanted to be second in command. Now that Daniel got the job, the wise men would have to do whatever he said. This made the wise men very unhappy, and they immediately started thinking of ways to get rid of Daniel. We gonna do the king likes Daniel more than me and you. Oh no, what we gonna do? We gotta get him out of here. Oh no, what we gonna do? The king likes Daniel more than me and you. Oh no, what we gonna do? We gotta get him out of here. We could drown him in the dungeon. We could let him rot in jail. Watch him eat a hungry crocodile We could put him on a camel's back And send him off to Ur With a cowboy hat without a brim A boot without a spur Oh, we could give him jelly donuts Take him all away Or we could fill his ears with cheese balls And his nostrils with sore pain. We could use him as a footstool Or a table to play Scrabble on Then tie him up and beat him up And throw him out of Babylon Or... Yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh... I like it It's sneaky And it just... Might... Work! We could use him as a footstool or a table to play Scrabble on Then tie him up and beat him up and throw him out of Babylon The very next morning, the wise men appeared before King Darius to try to trap Daniel with their scheme. You wanted to see me? <clears throat> We've got some news, good King Darius. We fear your position is precarious. There are some people here in Babylon who won't give you your due. They'd rather bow to other men. Can this be so? It is true. Oh dear. We've brought a solution of our own design. If you'll just sign this paper on the dotted line. It's an edict stating most concisely what we're all to do. We must bow our heads or bend our knees before no one but you. I see. <clears throat> Just one more time now, let's see if I've got this straight. A law to prove once and for all that I am great. If I'm the king, no one must doubt my full supremacy. So from this day forth, my citizens will pray to only me. Yes, but what if they don't? If they don't obey, any citizen will be thrown into the lion's den. Oh, yes? Well, I guess that would do it. All right then, good work, man. Ta-ta! So the law was passed, the deed was done. Daniel's troubles had just begun. Everyone in Babylon heard about the new law, including Daniel. But Daniel also knew God's law, and God's law told him that he should only pray to God. So the next day, just like every other day, Daniel prayed and thanked God for the sunshine and for all his friends. He also thanked God for giving him the courage to do what was right, even when he knew it could get him in trouble.
Did you say trouble? <laughs> so you guys are wise men. Well, that's pretty cool. Have you like have you always been wise? Would you you have to go to school for that? Were you serious about that cheese ball thing? Hey, I can see my house from here. Because you violated section 42192R94006.1 7B of the Code of Babylon forbidding prayer to anyone but King Jarius, you are hereby sentenced to be consumed by the lions. Goodbye. Hey, don't I get a phone call? Oh. Hey, Daniel! You're sure gonna have fun down there! We're not lying! <laughs> Uh, yeah, you better be lying down, um, cause those lions are gonna, um, lie on you! <laughs> uh, what? Mine was funny. Yours was goofy. Lions are gonna lie on you? They're gonna eat them! They're not gonna lie on them! Well, well, maybe they're gonna lie on them, then eat them. Or one will lie on them while another one maybe eats them. Or, well, maybe one will sit What, like lions are gonna cooperate? Like one's gonna lie on them and say, Hey, you eat them, I'll lie on them. Come on, we're the ones that are lying, not the lions. Oh, it's not so scary down here. A little musty, but not so scary. Oh no, what am I gonna do? It looks like I'm gonna end up as lions too. Don't cry, Daniel. Fear not, Daniel. Don't you? And though it seems this time you won't get through, God has made a way. Even though he still didn't know what to expect, Daniel felt better when he remembered that God was taking care of him, even in the lion's den. Elsewhere in the kingdom, the wise men were busy congratulating themselves for being so clever, while the king believing that he had lost a good friend, decided the only thing he could do was to pray that Daniel's God would protect him. The next morning, everyone ran down to the lion's den to see what was left of Daniel. It's hopeless. No one could survive a night with those lions. Hello? Did you hear something? Hello? Daniel, is that you? Oh uh, yeah, I'll be right up. I just have to say goodbye to my new friend. It's... it's impossible. Yes, it is. Well, hello, everybody. See you guys later. Thanks for the pizza. We had pizza? Well, it's a miracle. Surely your God is above all men. Now I understand. For even at the bottom of the lion's den, you were in his hand. I've got it's a new law. From this day forth, everyone will pray only to Daniel's God. No more of this silly praying to me business. Well, whose idea was that anyway? Oh, yes, I remember. I hear they're looking for wise men down in Egypt. Been fun, got to go now. Yeah, see ya. But where do you think you're going? Come back here, you hey, scoundrels. Guys, come back. You scallywag.